My job today is to track the arguments that I've made in my thesis to see if they continue all the way through. I'm basically I'm argument weeding, I think, because I have these arguments that go all the way through and then have little arguments that pop up and just go around in loops and I've got to take those out. But I thought uh, a good discipline for me would be to try and articulate concisely the arguments that I'm making and then I thought if I do them as little videos then you can get all the arguments without having to read the thesis and it's a nice shortcut for anybody who might want that. So one of the arguments that I consistently make throughout my thesis is that including people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities, people that in the UK get referred to as having profound and multiple learning disabilities in this work in research, in life, <laughs> is better for everyone. It's an argument you saw me make in my TED talk, Inclusion for Pity's Sake. The argument is extensive in the thesis so I, I was I swallowed then because I was thinking I want to explain why and then I this video would rapidly get as long as the thesis <laughs> but that's that's the argument I'm making it's better for everyone when we include a diversity of people the full diversity of people so it's not an argument that I'm making that's exclusive to people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities it would apply to all excluded peoples because I think when you include difference you recognize difference you value difference and if you look at the counter argument the argument would be that there is a way of being that is correct and that we should be the same and that our understanding of things should be based on a presumption of this sameness that's the one that links to the research because you could say well these are like a really weird odd group of people don't put them into the research it'll just confuse things <laughs> and then obviously the learning that you build when you take people out is based on a presumed norm that doesn't fit everybody and of course I come at this as an autistic person and so I'm aware of the impact in my life of the exclusion of autistic people from research so for example when you look at mental health research which is a area of research that has really leapt on in my lifetime you know when I was a child we didn't talk about mental health and then through my teenage years we began to talk about mental health in my 20s it became acceptable for you know boys to talk about mental health and now we have television um, campaigns talking about mental health it's really changed but when researchers have looked say you were doing a study about depression and you need a sample size of 50 people you choose 50 people if a couple of those people are autistic they were removed so that they wouldn't throw the results for everybody else so we have this great research about mental health but it's about the mental health of you know from my perspective it's about the mental health of other people so it has doesn't necessarily have any application to my life so I get at a personal level why excluding difference is dangerous and I get from a philosophical level in my work and a apprehension of new meaning level in my work why the inclusion of people who are different is valuable but if you look at the counter narratives and where they appear especially you know I'm working within the School of Education at Southampton University I have a background as an educator you look at these narratives in the education system and they say things like all people will you know do X or all people will um, wear the same clothes line up at the same speed um, and I could 
shout against those arguments. But the other thing that I have learned in doing this doctorate is that certainty often comes from a position of fear. And so when we see educators proud of the conformity that they've been able to exact over their students by the power that they have wielded to make everyone the same, to do the same thing. When we celebrate that one size fits all, if I fight back against that, then that power and that certainty just comes back at me full force. What was it they were afraid of that made them need to be so certain. Where did that insecurity come from? What was that vulnerability? And maybe if we answer those things, then they will feel more able and have the capacity to allow a system that is each according to his need, you know, that is genuinely fair, that's not just the same, and the notional idea that sameness is fair, you know, just daft stuff like the um, not being allowed to go to your school prom unless you've got 100% attendance. What? <laughs> you're not allowed to be ill, you're not allowed to be disabled, you're not allowed to have things going on in your life that's that's the other side of this argument those situations like that and those come from places of fear and I've now gone off onto too many tangents and it was meant to be just the thread I'm going to need to edit really well <laughs> but the argument is it's better for everyone when we include people with profound and multiple learning disabilities, people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities, but when we include difference, because when we include difference, we recognise that it is okay to be different. And some of us might be, you know, more the same than others, but nobody is the same. And if you have to deny aspects of yourself in order to feel like you belong, then that's, that's not the ideal we're striving for. We're striving for the ideal way you get to be you and we will see you and we will do research with you and you count as you are without having to change without having to conform so that's the argument that I'm making <laughs> hopefully more clearly than I've made it here <laughs>